one inch machine was the great big breakthrough from the original two inch machines. So the first thing you had to do was clean it. You squirted it. And then you very, very carefully went around the drum. This is where the tape goes, all the way around there. And you have to clean all the oxide off very, very carefully. Be careful not to damage the tiny little heads which spin round. So you clean all that up and you go around all the machine, the path the tape's going to take through the machine, carefully cleaning it. And if you don't do this, the machine can lock solid or it can snap the tape and it can break all sorts of things. You then laced it up. That is a reel of one inch tape that lasts 90 minutes from end to end. And it's the first tape we had, or first system we had, where we had time code. So before we had time code on the two inch machines, but we didn't see pictures when the tape was spooling the two inch, but with this technology we did. We always saw a picture when the tape was going through the machine. There was a huge breakthrough. To match that truck you've got next door, the scanner, you would have had a two inch machine, a very early two inch machine. Uh, they were huge. One two inch machine would extend from the wall of, that, that, of this van right to the other wall. It weighed over a tonne and it needed compressed air to make it work for the bearings and it needed a lot of tender loving care. But what I have brought to show you looks similar. And that is a two inch reel of tape. You can see it's a scale of it and you feel the weight of that and that's without tape on it and they're incredibly heavy. You could only carry one at a time. If you tried to pick up two tapes, you didn't walk very far. They were that heavy. And the way we used to edit them was with a razor blade. And uh, I've got... a little kit of parts, really. That is a piece of two inch tape, which you probably can't see, but I have developed it. And, and with a, uh, a, a, uh, an eyepiece, you can see. But what we did, the video machine recorded tracks across the tape. And to edit it, we had to develop those tracks. And what we did, we had a magic solution called Eddyview. That was the magic solution. Highly lethal if it caught fire, but it didn't. And we had this stuff. Now that doesn't look very impressive, but what's in there is iron dust. Very, very fine iron dust. And we'd mix it up with a bit of eddy view into a sort of gloop. And we'd spread that gloop onto the tape using cotton buds. And then you put that tape into the cutting machine and you peer through a microscope and you'd see those tracks. And to give you a clue where you were, you would see edit pulses at the end. And you found these tiny little pulses under the microscope, and then you guillotined the tape. Great. So that was the out point. And then you found the new material, you went up and down, found the bit you wanted, marked it with a china graph, put it in the machine, guillotined it, and then you stuck it all back together the sellotape effectively. Here we are. Got some, here's some we've got. This is the magic tape, Scotch video splicing tape. And if you look at it, it's incredibly fine and thin, very, very thin. And you pull a piece of that out and you'd stick it across the tape. And that is the result you got two bits of two inch tape stuck together and that was the edit. Now that did this vision, cut the vision, no problem, you could, you're allowed to cut vision but you can't cut sound can you? Because if every, the audience is applauding like crazy you cannot chop the sound. So you had to edit the sound separately. So before you cut the tape you dub that sound off onto a quarter inch tape recorder in sync. You then did your vision edit and chopped the tape and then you had to play back in sync the quarter inch tape recorder and a two inch machine took 10 seconds to stabilize whether it was recording or playing back it took 10 seconds to run up so within those 10 seconds 
you had to go into audio record before you got to the edit. You were now recording sync sound from the quarter inch tape, but via a fader. So at the edit point, you could do a quick mix, take the audience and claws out, and fade up the incoming new sound. Because we were trained engineers, we physically designed and physically built our own BT trucks. They're specialist BT trucks. The truck would have initially one machine in, one two-inch machine in. We then managed to shoehorn a second two-inch machine so we could do basic edits. Then when we went to one inch, because the machines were smaller, we could get three machines in the truck and we could then do proper editing with mixing and all that sort of thing. But in the two inch days to edit, it was very much more difficult. One machine in a truck, you could either edit with a razor blade, then when electronic editing came in, we could do proper electronic edits, but you needed at least two machines. So what would happen, you'd get two trucks and they'd back up to each other, and the gang plank would go between two trucks and a little sort of tent would be erected between them to keep the weather out and you would put wires between the two trucks and you edited from one truck to the other. Ah, the mix has been switched off so we're going to wait. Okay, right here, I'll wait for it to come back. Thank you. What we're trying to do now is line up, which is the official start to any program where you check that the pictures are there, the right signals there, the right level, you've got the sound, sound correct, you've got the uh, talkbacks available, the reverse talkbacks available, and you check all the levels, and then you put that onto the front of the tape for a minute, and uh, that means that when you take the tape away, the person playing it back knows exactly what to line up to, so that they get the same result from the tape as you're put on in the first place, even though you're playing it on a different machine. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do first? Uh, I'm just waiting, they've had to switch, ah, they switched the mixer back on, but at the start of the tape, I've got the reference colour bars, which is the industry standard signal. I can look at it on the vector scope, to see that it conforms to what it's supposed to conform to. I can check the levels here, that it conforms overall level, and the level is actually a little bit low. I'll uh, see if I can ask them to check that. ET to scanner. Yeah, Can't, the bars are a bit low. Um, do you want me to turn it up or will you turn it up? The overall level is low. This is where we've got to make it exactly right because if I record bars low, the person playing it back will wind up the level back to one volt. And if those bars are wrong and don't match the picture, you'll get very overexposed pictures. Yeah, hello Roger. If you want me to tweak them up, I will do that. Okay, I'll tweak them up. Thanks, cheers. This is the first machine the BBC had where we had a time code generator and a time code reader. So we know pretty accurately where we are on the tape, like we still do today. But before that, it was all done by tape time, which was an element of guessing involved. seconds and I'll play that back and see if it plays back the way it should. There we go. Let's record that and we'll see if we've got anything on the tape. So this is the first machine where we could see pictures when we were spinning through the tape, like that. We could never do before. And look.
look at that. Playing back, absolutely spot on. Absolutely spot on. One volt, chroma nice. VT to scanner. VT to scanner. Doug, I've finished with uh, line up tone, thank you very much, and I've finished with line up bars, and I'm happy. Do you want any here, any playback tone, Doug? Just lost tour fact. Just lost production tour fact. Or switch something off. Check on that. No, switch something off. I now stop the machine because the head's spinning. While the head's spinning, it gives you a still frame coming out, but it's a wearing away the heads. So there's no need for that. I can just come out of standby and spools the drum down and everything stops. That was a rehearsal action replay, but I'm not yet on the mixer apparently. So if I cut to the still not coming. director and ask him if he wants a, uh, another action replay or do I keep quiet and wait for him to decide what he wants because he's now got it involved in looking at something else. So you've got to be very careful when you interject on talkback whether you, you upset the director or give him information. Yeah. So Christian, I'm going to play back normally and they're going to put me on the mixer and try and time me in. Fortunately, there's black level along the tape, so I can leave it in play. And the controls for this are down here, inside the time base corrector, down here. Uh, system phase sync and subcarrier will probably be it, but I can't do it without being guided in by the engineers and the scanner. So I'm just waiting for them to get their acts together and then they'll give me a shout and uh, we'll see if we can time it in. It's a question of the easiest way of doing it. And then if I'm timed in, uh, the director can do a mix through to the action replay, which looks rather nice rather than just a smash cut. Have you done the rehearsal then? Um, it's sort of, but I wasn't on the mixer. Do we yeah. think it's these two? It is. Yeah. Phase and uh, yes. uh, uh, sink and, and subcarrier. Sub yeah. But you'll have it to is. meet me on the phone. Yes. If you can get onto production talkback, right. I can hear you. Yeah. And I can and, talk to you. And then I need to speak to Rax to tell me when it's in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's are they pulled to operate? No. No, those. They're always in. Oh. Those two are always in. Yeah. Uh, video phase. You don't want that. You, you, That's fine. Uh, yeah, switch it to manual anyway. Okay. And then those two. Oh, yeah. that, that, those two should bring you in. Yeah. So uh, I'll wait to hear you on production. Talk that thing up. Okay. Pick the, pick the, uh, it's the, the communications are a bit basic, which is why we're using uh, the production talk. Normally, we'd have a telephone. I'll have a telephone straight through to engineering and then we can talk direct and uh, sort everything out. Hello, 
Hello, hello, hello, PT, so I've got two people talking. Right, I've got a still frame of bars. Yeah. Line timing okay or just colour timing? Colour phase. If I tweak, if I tweak the uh, subcarrier, I'm tweaking now. Anything happening? I've run out that way. I'll go around the other way. Going around the other way. Going around. That's that's synced up. The level's okay. Actually, I ought to be able to see myself. Oh, looks funny coming out of the mixer, but... Is it? The, the feeder mixer... Uh, the feeder mixer out to me it is, and it's whirling around, I don't know why. But if it's okay with you... You're happy with that? Okay, I'll run it down. Right up, cheers. We've now got ourselves on the vision mixer. Uh, we've got it on a channel where we are synchronous on the mixer by tweaking this, and we can do an action replay where the director can mix from the live pictures straight to VT with a nice smooth mix, and then I can do an action replay, hopefully. Controls everywhere in this kit. Good. Just come off the that was rehearsal, so I will wipe that and just come off the end of the line up bars. What's that sound? That's tone, line up tone for the sound levels. It's one kilohertz and it's the absolute international standard at a certain level and that one kilohertz frequency. So I must record it at the right level and then again when you come to line up for replays people can tweak the sound level to get that spot on where it should be. <coughs> right. Next, next bit will be uh, for real when we record the program. Now that is howl round, what you're looking at. That's because it's like an audio howl round with a microphone. That's a video howl round. That was uh, the base of the Doctor Who opening titles, fun enough, with that video howl round. Because I'm on the mixer, and what the mixer is doing is feeding the output to me, which is me going back to the mixer, which comes back to me, and it goes round and round and round, and, and that is a video howl round. <laughs> 